Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation, a cubic one, right? So we have f of x minus 1 over x equals x cubed minus 1 over x cubed. And we're going to try to find an expression for f of x in terms of, f, in terms of x, of course. So I'll be presenting two methods to be able to solve this problem. And you're going to let me decide or just let me know what you think, which method is better. And if you have any other ideas, let us know. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. My first method involves setting this whole thing equal to something. So usually, if you're trying to find f of x from f of something else, then you usually want to set the whole thing equal to something so that at the end, you're going to find something like f of t in terms of t on the right-hand side. And then you can easily replace t with x. Of course, the x is not the same x. So sometimes people are confused, like, how do you change back and forth? You can, because these are just dummy variables. So anyway, so let's go ahead and start by replacing x minus 1 over x with t. So our next step would be to solve for x in terms of t so that we can substitute it here and here. Make sense? So that's going to be our next goal. Let's go ahead and try to solve for x. Multiply everything by x first. That should give you a quadratic equation when you move everything to the left-hand side, right? So Let's go ahead and solve it using the quadratic formula because we have a formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is for t squared, minus 4ac. Double negation will give us plus 4, and all of that is divided by 2. This is kind of nice, and it also shows you when a and c are, have opposite signs, then you always have a solution because the discriminant will be greater than 0. And you can see here the discriminant is t squared plus 4, which can never be uh, less than or equal to zero. Can't even be zero, right? In the real world, of course. So this is our x value. But which one do we use? That's a good question, right? Uh, my answer would be it shouldn't matter. So let's just try one. And if you want, you can try the other one and let me know what you get from there. And if you're getting the same thing, but I'm guessing you should get the same thing, right? For obvious reasons, for reasons which will be clear later. With the second method, okay? So, stay tuned. Now, I'm going to use the, the one with the plus sign because I'm, I tend to be more, I try to be positive as much as possible. Okay, sometimes it's not always possible, but I try. So, we're going to replace x with that. And remember, our equation was f of x minus 1 over x equals x cubed minus 1 over x cubed. Now, x will be replaced with this. And, of course, you don't need to check, but if you want, you can but this should turn into a t when you substitute this for x. Make sense? I mean, you can do it to double check, but it should work. Now, from here, we get f of t equals something in terms of x, but I'm going to turn it into t by using this, t plus square root of t squared plus 4 divided by 2, right? That'll be cubed. That's going to replace x. And then, of course, the reciprocal of that. Now, you can do this in a couple different ways. You can make a common denominator, which will make things a little easier, maybe. Well, maybe not. Because the thing is, you're going to need to use the sixth power, which I don't think you want to do. So another way to do it is maybe just focus on this for now, find out what it is, and then the other piece is just going to contain the reciprocal. So easy, right? Whatever this thing is, let's call that A. The other one is going to be 1 over A. Okay? You don't need to keep you know, using variables, but I'm just saying... These two are reciprocals. Make sense? So how do we simplify something like this? t plus the square root of t squared plus 4 over 2 cubed. Of course, we're going to cube a quotient. So we're going to cube the numerator, right? We're going to cube the numerator. And we're going to cube the denominator. And then that'll be it. But how do you cube a sum? Well, I usually use this formula for cubing a sum. a cubed plus b cubed. That's my favorite version. Because this also makes uh, using the cubic formula easier when I replace a plus b with y. And then you can kind of get a cubic from there. A depressed cubic, of course. So now we're going to get the following. a cubed, this is my a, this is my b, by the way. So we're going to get t cubed plus... And, okay, how do you cube a radical? Well, you just square it and then multiply by the original. That's how you cube it. So if you cube square root of x, you get x root x. Get it? And of course, we have more terms, plus 3ab, 3ab 
is going to be that multiplied by a plus b, which is the original expression before we cubed it. Okay? And then, of course, the whole thing is supposed to be divided by 2 cubed, which is 8. Awesome. <laughs> Not so awesome, but, you know, that's what we have. Let's go ahead and try to simplify this as much as possible, right? We get t cubed plus... So here, when you distribute, you're going to get some terms, but let's go ahead and keep it that way for now because I want to combine like terms. So my radical is going to be kind of like what I have here, 3t squared multiplied by the radical. And then when you multiply these two things, you're going to get t squared plus 4, and then multiply by 3t, it's going to be 3t cubed plus 12t. You get it? And then the whole thing is going to be multiplied, I mean divided by 8. Now, I want to go ahead and combine these two things because they both have the same radical. And these two things, so that's going to be 4t cubed. And then I should be getting plus 12t, which is this one. And then I have the radicals. When I combine them, it's going to look like this. t squared plus 4 plus 3t squared is going to be 4t squared plus 4, right? And then all of that is multiplied by the square root of t squared plus 4 and then it is divided by eight. Great. Now here's the million dollar question, right? When you get something like this, how do you find this reciprocal? You just flip it, right, upside down. And when you do, interesting things happen, let me tell you what it is. But at this point, I don't think we can do any type of factoring. I could be wrong, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you take out a 4t, you're gonna get four, t squared plus four. Actually, um, that's kind of factorable, I think. So we could probably take out a square root of t squared plus 4 here. And uh, we're going to have 4t times that, right? Let me try. Plus, uh, we're going to get 4t squared plus 4. And then all of that is divided by 8. I mean, we can divide everything by 4, which will make things a little simpler, but no big deal. Uh, I don't think we can do anything else. So anyways, whatever you do, at some point you're going to have to flip this, right? And when you do, you're going to get something like this, 8 over, okay, suppose we did the simplifying, okay? So it's going to look like this, square root of t squared plus 4, everything is divided by 4, so it's going to be t times the square root of t squared plus 4, plus t squared plus 1, all of that is divided by 2, so we still have something in the denominator, and now we're going to go ahead and flip it, and this is what we're going to have. You know what? I think I'd rather have it distributed. Uh, I since I thought about it, like it makes more sense. So let me go ahead and distribute. That should give me t times t squared plus 4 plus t squared plus 1 multiplied by the radical. So this is basically in a form that I like it to be. So something like a plus b root c. You see what I'm talking about in the denominator, of course. So this is kind of like my a in this case, and this is my b, and this is my c. Get it? And whenever you have something like this, let's just go with that, you can multiply by a minus b root c to rationalize the denominator. Of course, these are all square roots, so it should be easy to do, right? We got rid of all the, well, we, we don't have any cube roots anyways, so it should be good. But yeah, this is a lot of work, don't you think? You're going to have to do this, and the denominator will give us a squared minus b squared c, and of course, this should be rational, so on and so forth, right? Great, so that's a lot of work. So why don't we just do this in a much, much easier way. But I'd like you to check with the first method, which is kind of super long and painful. Maybe I'm missing something. If uh, Make sure that we're going to be getting the same thing. So let me write the original equation one more time. And now we're going to do the hocus pocus abracadabra. Are you ready? All right. So if you look at the right-hand side, you probably realize, hopefully, that this can be written as follows. If you cube x minus 1 over x, let me just do it first. No, they're not equal, so don't... Don't just claim that they're equal. I'm not saying there's other things. But if you cube that, you're going to get this, x cubed minus 1 over x cubed, minus 3 times x times 1 over x, times x minus 1 over x. Again, using the same version that I used before, kind of like the cubic ver uh, formula version. And now, so that, that's what I get on the right-hand side. So in other words, uh, if this is equal to that, right, I can basically write this as... This plus this. Does that make sense? Because these two things are equal, right? So I'm going to solve for x cubed minus 1 over x cubed. In other words, I'm trying to say, this is what I'm trying to say, x cubed minus 1 over x cubed can be written as follows. I hope I didn't make it too confusing. I usually do. 
but if x minus 1 over x cubed plus 3 times x times 1 over x times x minus 1 over x. And to prove that this works, you can go out and expand it. You're going to get some terms like minus 3 times x minus 1 over x. They're going to cancel out. And you're going to end up with this. Make sense? Okay. Go ahead and test it out. But here's the fun part. x and 1 over x cancel out, leaving us with something super duper awesome. And that is we get x minus 1 over x to the third plus 3 times x minus 1 over x. And this is, isn't this awesome? Look at this. When you replace this with something like t, and we get that on the right-hand side. So we can just call this t cubed plus 3t. And since you want your function in terms of x, you can always do that. Just switch the variable, no big deal. But that should be f of x in terms of x. Could we get the same thing with the first method? Go ahead and give it a try and let me know what you find. And please comment down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus BI, my other channel. And bye-bye.